there's a hundred peaches on this one third of the tree easy this tree might have 400 peaches on it so I mean if you can get one of your peach trees to live to this maturity I mean it's enough for you all your neighbors friends family it's crazy amount of fruit what's going on beautiful subscribers it's May 17th here southeastern Pennsylvania zone 7a and some of you guys wanted an update on the peaches so this is gonna be a short video we're gonna take a look at the Crest Haven the contender the Red Haven and Alberta two different types of white peaches to see how they're making out so far there's seven peach trees here. We have the Crest Haven, Red Haven, uh, Arctic White, Alberta, and then the three older ones that I don't know the names of, but this middle one is a white flesh, white skin. That one over there is like a late summer yellow peach, probably the last one we'll pick. And then the biggest tree, Right there behind the Red Haven is an early ripening yellow peach. So that'll be the first one we get to taste test. And I really wish I remembered the names because that tree is awesome. It blooms the latest, but ripens the earliest, which is um, a hard thing to find. So let's check them out a little closer. Here's a close up of the Crest Haven, you can see we want one peach every six inches. So these two are way too close together. We're gonna take that one off at the end. But this tree is easily holding 60 pieces of fruit. You can see how big it is. It's been in the ground now for three years. I bought it, it was pretty big size. And it is starting to mature. Here's a close up of the Red Haven. Fruit is getting close to the size of the golf ball. It's May 17th. Tree's looking good. I was complaining about the Red Haven blooming so early, but actually it set a good amount of fruit. And I didn't have to thin like crazy because it didn't set as much as some of the others. Like the late frost that it got hit by actually helped my thinning. Not nearly as much of the tree set, but enough of it did set. So here's the Red Haven right here alone. One, two, three, four on this branch. That's way too many. We got to get in here and thin it out some more. But after all the complaining I did about it blooming too early and the late frost, the Red Haven has a good amount of fruit on it. Here is a brand new Alberta peach that I planted. It's very young. It's only been in the ground a few weeks. And I thought I would show you guys what cupping looks like. This tree is dying of thirst. You can see all the leaves are starting to cup and that's a way for the tree to block itself from the sunlight to try and cut back on the water. So it cups so that the sun doesn't bake on it and make it need even more water that it doesn't have. So when you see this, it's very important to water it and water it aggressively. Here's the white lady. She handled the frost like a champ. This peach is awesome. It's got bright red skin, white flesh, and sugar content is off the charts. I'll be excited to put this on the brick meter. We'll show you guys different brick levels from each peach tree in a few more weeks. But the white peach always has more sugar than the other. So if you're into that, this would be the peach for you and it handled the frost no problem. 
try and get a close up here of some of the fruit of the white lady. It's a little further behind. It's not as far developed. I showed this already in one of my short videos, but this is a peach boar trap. There's a pheromone in there, that little scent cone in the middle, and it will attract all the male peach boars, and they get stuck in there and die. Peach boar is a nasty insect. Bores holes in the base of your tree, and you'll come out one day and see the gamosis coming out and like goo from the base of your tree and you're gonna be all pissed off and that's because the peach borer has gone inside there to lay its eggs for the following season so these traps work really well unfortunately they're expensive but if you have a bunch of peach trees especially if you don't want to spray the trunks with permethrin then I suggest you pick some of these up on Amazon. All right, so this is the contender, and it does have a decent amount of fruit on it, but I have this tree about 200 yards away from all my other peach trees, and I did that because I am trying to experiment with it. I am going to see how it does without cross-pollination, and I am going to slowly back the chemicals off and see how it does. But compared to the others, it has less fruit set. And that's probably because it did not get any cross pollination. There's entire sections of the contender that don't have any fruit set on them. So I don't know if it was the spring and here's a couple or the fact that like I said I have it away from the others so the contender it did okay this year but like I said I have it by itself not near any of the other trees so it's suffering from lack of cross pollination here's the crest haven and out of the other two that we already looked at, it handled the late frost by far the best. Hardly any of the flowers got damaged and it set way more fruit than the Contender and the Red Haven. So, out of those three, the Crest Haven did the best this spring. Here's my oldest peach tree. This is the last one to bloom, earliest one to ripen. So I am going to try and air layer some branches on this tree so I can have it for the rest of my life or try and figure out how to root some cuttings, which has always been difficult for me. But I don't remember the name. This peach tree is incredible though for those two characteristics. And this will be the first one we get to taste test. And I had to thin it aggressively already. Let's uh, zoom in up here and we'll take a look because they're the biggest so far. And you can see they're definitely bigger than the others. They ripen first. Uh, we will be taste testing these soon. I had to guess there's at least 300 peaches on this tree after thinning aggressively. For a small example here, this branch is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on this one branch, which is still way too many. This is arguably my favorite peach and I don't know the name. So this is another one that I'm gonna have to air layer soon because it's getting old. It's at least 13 years old and peaches trees do not live that long. So I am gonna have to air layer this so I can have it the rest of my life. But this peach tree has white skin 
and white flesh when ripe. So, my, the skin is literally green, greenish white when it's ripe. And nobody thinks it's ripe and no one even wants to take it off the tree, but it tastes so good. Crazy sugar content. Hopefully you guys will help me identify it later this year when we do the taste test. And this tree probably has at least 200 pieces of fruit on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, there's ten on this branch alone. I mean, we're talking an insane amount of fruit. Let's see if we can zoom in here. And I try to get them to every six inches. This is a late summer peach. It's probably end of August. It's ripe. I don't know the name of this one either. But it's probably my favorite. It has the most flavor complexity. It's not just all sugar like the white ones. It has a lot of different flavors going on and it's by far the biggest peach, probably the size of a softball. And that's because it's the last peach. It's end of August. It's had a lot of time to grow and it's had a lot of time to build up the sugar content and flavor complexity. All right, here's a bonus tree. This is an Arctic white nectarine. Very similar to a peach. It'll ripen earlier though. Flower earlier, unfortunately, so you gotta deal with the late frost. I did protect this tree when we got cold temperatures. And it's managed to set a good amount of fruit. Arctic white nectarine. Here's a really cool looking tree. This is a fully dwarf nectarine. And it was supposed to be a patio bonanza peach, but it's not. It's definitely a nectarine. And unfortunately, the fruit doesn't taste that good. I've never been able to get a good tasting crop off of it, no matter how much I thin. So, if it didn't look so cool, I would definitely be ripping this out. But for small areas, you want the Bonanza Patio Peach. You guys know I was battling the late frost earlier this year, and out of all my trees, the Contender has the least amount of peaches on it, and then the Red Haven. And then all the other varieties are fully loaded. And the contender I have on the other side of the farm, so it's not getting any cross-pollination, so it's not exactly fair, but it should have more fruit on it than it does. I am going to have to recommend the Crest Haven. It just did the best out of all of my trees that I know the names of. So we'll be back. In a few more weeks, we'll start taste testing and measuring the bricks for each one. If you guys know the name of this white flesh, white skin peach, hit me up in that comment section. And like always, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.